Okay, good morning everybody. Hi, I'm Jamie from Catech. I'm one of the application engineers here. Apologies for the late start. We've had a small uh, technical problem, but we've, we've managed to overcome it. I um, hope you guys are all well on this uh, nice sunny Friday. Uh, I'm going to take the next half an hour or so just to introduce you to a program called SolidWorks Composer. It used to be called 3D Veer Composer, actually, um, so forgive me if I uh, use the old name. It's taken a while, but um, it is SolidWorks Composer. So it's one of the other tools that we have in the SolidWorks portfolio that allow you to create uh, technical communication. Now, that kind of can vary between between traditional 2D documents, as we're looking at, at my screen at the moment, um, and we can have kind of 3D experiences as well. So I'm going to start kind of quite basic, and then I'm going to move on to some of the more interesting stuff. So the first thing I'm going to look at is this um, assembly manual or maintenance manual, bigger problem for this whole Matro product. It's called the 4240 spreader. It's a product used by rescue teams to get people out of cars. Uh, amongst other things, they do do other things, but this is one of the products they do. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is just to show you in SolidWorks, actually. This is the product. You, some of you may have seen this, actually. This is a, a product that SolidWorks have used for the last couple of years for uh, product demonstrations. Um, this is the product here. Uh, and I'd just like to bring your attention to the feature manager design tree over on the left hand side. So this is where it's obviously highlighting uh, the sub-assemblies that we've got up here and then some of the individual parts. The reason I'm showing you in this is because when we actually look at it in 3D, uh, sorry, there we go, 3D via Composer, it's not, it's SolidWorks Composer. Um, when we look at it in SolidWorks Composer, uh, the hierarchy actually stays the same. So we're going to be looking at that in just a second. But first of all, let's just go back to this PDF. Now this is a PDF that I've created uh, from Word of this maintenance manual. So if we just have a quick look at some of the images, all of these images that you see here come straight from Composer. So we've got a series of uh, images. These are just JPEGs, but they could be JPEGs or bitmaps, raster files, basically. And then we've got some text boxes over here. So this is telling us how to remove the jaws, how we can service those jaw tips and arms. And at the end, there is going to be an image for how to replace the battery. We're actually going to go ahead and create that as part of the demo and drop it in here. But this is just a PDF document of the Word document. Now, I'm using Word. Um, I'm not suggesting you, you need to use Word. Um, that's just my publishing tool of choice. So here's my Word document. You can see here that these are the images that you've seen here. So you can see I'm just using Word as my my publisher, but you can use anything. Now what's quite important is when I've inserted these images, I've actually inserted them and linked them to the original file as well. So that means if I overwrite the file at any point, these images are going to update as well. Now for me, the best part of uh, Composer is the fact that this is fully associative to the CAD model. That means if the CAD data changes, then we can update the Composer file to have the new geometry in it. So this means basically that we can run our uh, technical communication phase alongside or concurrently with our design stage. So we don't need to kind of wait until the very, very last minute before creating these kind of documents. We can actually run this concurrently with our design stage. So at the very, very bottom, you can see that we've got this and how to create or how to replace the battery. So as a part of the demo, that's the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and create an image that shows me how to replace the batteries on my 4240 spreader. Okay, so coming over to Composer itself then, let's just introduce you to the interface of, of Composer. We've got our main kind of graphics window here. Down the left hand side at the moment, we've got a tabulated toolbar across the top here. Um, and with our views, you can see that each one of these represents the images that you saw in that Word document. And I always describe this very much like PowerPoint in a way, in the fact that we're creating slides as you would in PowerPoint. And the nice thing is that we can link to other slides. So for example, I can make, you know, if I was to click on this jaw here, I could take this maybe to this slide. So it's very much like PowerPoint, although you've got the benefit of having 3D CAD data in the background as well. So let's just have a look at this view over here. This is going to be my base view. I just want to show you a couple of things that we can do because in the assembly tab over here, you can actually see that we've got the same files hierarchy or the same file structure as we do in SolidWorks. So you can see up here we've got the parts and the assemblies as well. Also, we've got different ways that we can look at this as well. So I, try, I choose to, to use the technical output, which is quite nice. This always reminds me of almost like a Haynes manual, if you like. But we've got different ways of showing the geometry on screen. So you can see here that we can switch between different ways of displaying the actual image. So I'm going to leave it at technical. We've also got different ways that we can uh, make it look a bit more realistic. We can add this per pixel, which basically just makes the lighting a bit better. We can add shadows. We can add ambient occlusion. So that's a, a new tool that was brought into SolidWorks not so long ago. We can incorporate a ground. 
and maybe this grid as well. I think the grid's probably not going to be too clear for you guys at home there. Um, but again, we can have a shadow on the ground and even have a, have a mirror as well if we want to. I generally don't tend to do that. It's a technical document. I don't want it looking too kind of rendered. It's a you know it's it's meant to be for me. It's a technical image, but you guys can can have it how you like, obviously. So the first thing I'm going to do, if I just come over to my views, is you can see that all of these views represent those different images in the Word document. So I'm going to create now a view that I can use in my Word document that shows me how to remove the battery cover. So I'm going to start with this view over here. This is my base view. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of modify this, and then I'm going to create a new view based on it. So the first thing to do is just to twist the model. I'm using a space controller here, a 3D mouse. Uh, but I could use my mouse, as you can see here. Um, but a 3D, it does support 3D controller. So I'm just going to zoom into my battery cover. This is my battery cover here. And what's nice in SolidWorks in Composer is that there are no mates. Uh, so I can pull things out quite randomly. So what I'm going to do under my Transform tab, I've got this Translate button. You can see I can rotate things. I can translate things. So that's just giving them an offset, if you like. I've got this free drag as well. But the Translate is going to actually allow me to move things along a given axis. So I'm going to select Translate. I'm just going to select those two black screws. You can see that. And then you see my trad, so I can pull them up, I can pull them out, or I can pull them over. I'm going to pull them out, something like about that. Then I'm going to just grab hold of my cover and pull that out. Then I'm going to take my gasket, and then I'm going to take my battery. So you can see it's really, really easy to start modifying some of this geometry. Well, not modifying the geometry, but modifying their placement. What I'd like to do now is, you can see here in some of the other views, we've got these nice red arrows. Now, gone are the days where I used to actually model arrows in SolidWorks when I was creating technical documents. Uh, we've got a great tool under our author tab for being able to create arrows. We can create arrows, just straight arrows, or circular arrows, or actually bent arrows as well, corner arrows. I'm going to go for just a linear arrow. I'm just going to select the back of my screw there and take it back to where it came from, something like that. Then I'm going to select both arrows. Now what's quite nice is these arrows, as in PowerPoint, you know, I can change the thickness, I can change the width, I can change the border, the color, the fill, the opacity. So if I just come over to my properties, you can see here, these are my properties associated with both of those arrows. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the opacity right up. But you can see that the opacity there is controlling how much of that, how much of the arrows we can see. So I'm going to turn the opacity right up, but also I'm going to allow this gradient over here. So we've got an option just there for gradient. So I can actually enable a gradient. If I tick that, you can see that it fades out quite nicely as where it's come from and then becomes gradually uh, up to fully opaque at the end there. Also, you can see at the moment these arrows are kind of sitting on top of these covers, the gasket, um, whereas the arrows actually pass through. They should pass through. So I'm just going to take a tick out of that box, stay on top, and that means then that it actually cuts through any geometry that it does. And you can see here now that it cuts through the gasket and the actual cover itself. And all I'm going to do is just move them back slightly. So I'm just going to use that triad. And again, I can control exactly how I like those arrows to look. So with Composer, what you see really is what you get. So this image here, I'm really quite happy with it. Under my views, I'm just going to take a picture. And that basically creates me a brand new view. So up here, again, we've got our base view. We've got our remove jaws. And then finally, we've got our battery cover view here. Now the animations that you're seeing, hopefully you guys, if you've got a decent enough bandwidth, you can see the, the animations that are happening between these slides. I'm not controlling that. That's actually Composer doing that for me, and we can utilize that as well, which is great. Um, but it, it does kind of add to the whole, the whole drama, if you like. So going back to this remove jaws, if I just have a quick look at my document, my, my uh, let's just have a look at my Word document, actually. We go up to the top. The very first thing that it says to do to remove the jaws from the whole mattress spreader, you must first relieve all the pressure from the system by removing the core connection plug. So this is the connection plug here. However, when we come down to some of the other views, it's actually been left in there. Now, I guess that's not too much of a biggie if I'm using Composer. But let's say I'm using more traditional methods. Let's suggest maybe I'm, I'm asking a design engineer to, to keep taking snapshots for me. Or even worse, I'm doing this by hand. To redo all of those views, without this is probably quite a lot of work. So in Composer, it's really, really easy. All I'm going to do is on this view, so this is where it should be removed, I'm going to select it. I'm just going to hit H on my keyboard. That's for hide. I'm just going to update that view. And then I'm going to select all of the other views that I want that change to be updated in. Right click and just say I want to update the views with that change. So you can see now that all of the other views don't have that 
handle detail. So again, this is a really quick way of making sure that any changes are reflected throughout the whole document and not just in one particular file, saving a lot of time. So if I come back to my battery view, you can see here, if I just scroll out ever so slightly, that we don't have that handle core anymore, so that's great. Okay, so under my workshops, I've got high resolution images, and this is now where I can create some high res images for my Word document. However, annoyingly, I've just received a phone call from one of the designers telling me that he's made a change. So at this point, normally if I've created this document, you know, my Word document's created, everything else, I'm going to have a pretty bad day. Uh, I'm going to have to redo all of these images, I'm going to have to do other screenshots, um, maybe a bit of Photoshop work perhaps, but with SolidWork Composer, because it's being run concurrently with any changes that are made, all I need to do is tell Composer that there is a change, update the new geometry, and that's going to bring it in. So let's just have a, a look back at SolidWorks, and you can see here, this new handle design. I'm going to show you the old one in a second in back in Composer, but we've got this flat, thick bit of sheet metal here coming into our formed handle. So the handle down into this flat sheet metal part. Now if I go back to my Composer document, and we'll just open up that base view again, you can see the handle's actually different. The handle is is quite significantly different actually, so there is going to be a fair amount of rework there if I've got to redo this whole document again. So all I'm going to do instead is update the CAD geometry. So if I just rotate it around, we'll just get it into a view where we can see this change happen. Up here I'm just going to say that I want to update the SOLIDWORKS document here with another file. I'm just going to browse to my folder and this is the assembly here, so this uh, 4240 spread of finished. So this is relying on, if you're not using any kind of data management tools, so if you're not using Workgroup or Enterprise, this is relying on the design engineer saying to the technical author, whoever's creating these documents, hey, look, the, the document's changed, there's more data, or there's revised CAD data. If you're using something like Enterprise PDM, it will prompt people that things are related or things need to be changed as well. So for instance, if you're using Enterprise PDM, if you update and the, the new assembly gets signed off, it will flag up that the 3D veer, oh sorry, there we go again, the SOLIDWORKS Composer document is out of date and also anything that's associated with that as well. So if you've got a Word document or you've got a, uh, a PDF document uh, using things that are being created through Composer, then it, that will be flagged that they're out of date as well. So it's obviously a great uh, benefit for using Enterprise PDM or any kind of product data management tool. I'm not using one here, so this is kind of relying on somebody saying, hey, Jeremy, the data's changed, but it's not a problem. So I'm just going to select this file. This is the new SolidWorks file. You can see here also, if I just open up this, uh, the file types that we can open. We can open up quite a few different parts. We can open up Inventor parts, Native Inventor, SolidWorks, obviously. We can op open up Alias, ProE, Katir v4 v5, so you know I just step. This is opening up lots of different 3D data. So don't think that you have to have SolidWorks data for this package to work. It's obviously a SolidWorks uh, you know package, but you don't need SolidWorks data. You can use any type of 3D data. So let's just filter this. I'm going to look for SolidWorks assemblies. So there it is. I'm just going to set a few of these options to match how they were imported last time, and simply say update. Now when I do that, what, Solid, what Composer is going to do is launch its own version of SOLIDWORKS. It's kind of on board, it's just a translator that's translating all of that 3D CAD data, the SOLIDWORKS data, into an SMG format. SMG is the native format for Composer. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this is live TV, anything could happen. Uh, there we go. So it's updated with that new geometry, which is great. So if I come over to some of the other views, you can also see that all of these new views have got this new handle detail and even that battery cover that I've created there. If I just zoom out slightly, you can see that we've got our new handle design. So this is pretty good. So over here, it's named this just by default as view one. If I just zoom in there, you can see view one. I'm just going to rename that. You can see all the others have got kind of sensible names. So let's just rename that and we'll call that uh, battery cover. And then up on my high resolution image, workshop, let's just pin that open. You can see here that we can create lots of different uh, kind of resolutions, we can anti-alias it if we want to. So the first thing I'm going to do is just ask it to create multiple views. So it's basically going to save all of these in one go instead of having to come through each one and save them individually. Also I can change the size, so let's go for quite a high size, we'll go for say 3000 uh, pixels, we'll go for 300 dpi, quite nice resolution there. And all I'm going to say is that I want a white background as well because obviously the document or the, the images that are in my Word document at the moment have got a white background, so let's just tick that. And then I'm just going to say save as. 
and I'm just going to drop them into my original folder. So this is the folder at the moment that all of those images are coming from, and I'm just going to say save. It's going to go ahead and overwrite all of those files with the new files, and it's also going to give me this one as well, that battery cover. So let's just minimize this. I can actually close down SolidWorks as well. And if I come over to my Word document now, you can see at the moment they're still out of date. Now, all I have to do is to actually close this down. So I'm going to close the Word document and reopen it again. And it's going to go ahead and find all of those new, uh, all of those new files. And you can see here, if I just zoom in a bit, that if I scroll down, you can see that all of these new images have got that new handle design in, which is great. So again, I'm saving a lot of time. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm using Word here, but you can use any publishing tool you like. Lots of them do support, or most of them do support, the, uh, the ability to link a file as well. So this is all I'm doing is I'm inserting and linking a file. So with that effect, let's, uh, let's insert that image for my battery replacement. So all I'm going to do over here is go into Insert, Picture. I'm going to go ahead and find that picture on my desktop. Uh, there it is. There, my battery cover image and instead of just clicking insert I'm just going to pull that down and go insert and link so there it is right there so I'm just going to rescale it slightly and just change the text position and we'll drop that in there and then from there we can save out our new PDF just drop it onto my desktop and here's our new PDF with all of our new handle designs and finally our battery cover image as well. So that's great, saved a lot of time with that change there. Okay, so that's kind of how to create traditional 2D documents if you like. What I'd like to do now is to uh, introduce you to other things that Composer can do. Now, one of my favorites is the SVG. Now those technical authors amongst you will know what an SVG is hopefully. It's a scalable vector graphic. Uh, a scalable vector graphic is very different to a um, a raster image, i.e. a bitmap or a JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG or something like that, that you know, we all know that if you zoom into those high enough, you're going to lose the quality. Uh, you, you know, they, they, they don't, they're not scalable. But this image here, you can see, this is an SVG. I'm actually viewing this through HTML. Um, but you can see this is a, a scalable graphic. So I could have this as you know, large as the curtain side of a truck, and it would still be really, really good quality. So the line weight's always going to be really, really good. Now, what's quite nice about this, this is an SVG, as I said, I'm viewing this through, H, uh, through HTML, is that this is almost like an interactive bill of materials, if you like. If I just hover over some of the items in my bill of materials down here, you can see that it highlights them in the graphics window. So this is a great way of maybe finding a spare part or being able to kind of explore in a bit more detail some of the assemblies. So you can see here, as I come through here, it highlights them on screen. Now what's quite nice is that's, that works the other way as well. So if I just highlight this, it tells me what that part is in the bill of materials. So I can quickly identify maybe what part I need. What's quite nice about this is also we can create hyperlinks. We can link to other SVG files. So with that, what I can do is click on this, uh, this master control assembly over here. And you can see that takes me into a new SVG. And again, I can navigate my way through, find out exactly what's on screen, quantities. These quantities and things like that all come from Composer. Um, all the descriptions and the part numbers come through SolidWorks. So I'm going to touch on that in a bit more detail in a second. But this is from the metadata. So metadata is all the kind of properties that you set in SolidWorks. Uh, part numbers, descriptions, materials, finish, those kind of things. That actually gets drip fed into Composer, which is quite nice, uh, and kind of get, gets washed out as you're doing the bill of materials. So again, because this, these are sub-assemblies, I can explore in a bit more detail what's going on inside. So you can imagine the power of this being able to really dive quite deep inside of your, inside of your products and allow your consumers and viewers the same, the same privileges. So again, there's some sub-assemblies here, so I can just have a quick look. Now what you see here are SVGs with color. Now I'm going to show you uh, how we can do color ones, how we can do black and white ones. Uh, for me, I think the black and white ones I actually prefer slightly, um, but maybe you can make, make your own mind up in a second. So going back up to top level, I guess the nice thing about it being viewed through HTML through Internet Explorer is the fact that uh, everybody knows how to use the Internet Explorer. So you know, everybody knows how to use the back and forth buttons to navigate their way through these things, through these pages. So as a part of the next stage, I'm actually going to go ahead and create this SVG that you see here. So 
this is a nice exploded view of that master control assembly uh, with a bit of materials and some balloons on there as well. Okay, so let's open up a, another document. So let's just change over to my interactive player. So you can see here, this is just another SMG for, uh, file that I've created. Uh, we've got our master view. This is the assembly that I'm going to do some work on. But you can see here all of the other views kind of associated with those SVG files that you saw before. So let's have a look at how to create an exploded view. Now, this is quite important to say, I guess, that because this is a SOLIDWORKS package, it's under the DASO umbrella, um, lots of kind of funky bits and pieces come from, from Composer into SOLIDWORKS and vice versa. So there's been some really nice improvements. Those of you that are using 2012 and, and more or a newer uh, for SOLIDWORKS will hopefully be using the magnetic line tool. That tool has come straight from Composer. Um, what I'm hoping is what I'm about to show you comes into SOLIDWORKS because this is a great tool for being able to explode things really, really quickly. So all I'm going to do is just drag a selection box over that, uh, that assembly that you see there. And on my transform tab, I'm going to hit this linear explode mode. Now watch this. All I'm going to do is just pull it out like that. You can see that the anchor part stays where it is and all of the other things get exploded. Now why doesn't SOLIDWORKS work like that? I'm sure hopefully it will do at some point. So I'm going to pull all of them out like that so you can see really, really quick, simple to explode out your parts. Now you can see here these screws, they actually belong here. So where they are at the moment is really not that useful. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag a selection box over those. That's a right to left crossing window. And it's selected just my screws there. And what I can do, what's quite nice, is I can tell those parts to go home or to go back to another part where they were in relation to. So if I just right click, I'm just going to say that I want to go home to that point there. And you can see now that they're inside where they were before. So I can reassociate them back to another part in relation to another part. And whilst they're still selected, I'm going to choose my spherical explode mode just to pull those out slightly. So you can see I can pull those out radially. As I spin that around, you can see that's pulled them out quite nicely. So that's my, uh, my explode done. We can also create associative paths as well, like dotted lines to illustrate where things have come from. So if I just select this handle, for example, under my author tab, I can create a path. So I'm just going to create a path, and you can see there that it comes back to, um, back to this master cylinder assembly. Now you can see also that it's sitting on top of things. But as I said before, everything's got lots and lots of properties that we can change, just like you would in PowerPoint. So if I go to the properties of that line, first thing I'm going to do is say I don't want them to be on top. And also I'm going to change it from black maybe to red. So now you can see that we've got our dotted line it goes through and it's quite nice as it updates as we move it around and you can see what we would see. However, I'm not a big fan of that so I'm just going to delete it. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is to show how we can create builds of materials. Now what's quite nice about uh, Composer is the fact that, as I said before, it brings in all the meta properties from SOLIDWORKS. So I don't have to manually create my builds of materials here, it's all going to get kind of washed out. So let's do that. I'm just going to drag a selection box over that uh, sub-assembly, over the entire sub-assembly, and use one of my different workshops. So let's have a look at my bill of materials workshop instead. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to ask SOLIDWORKS Composer to generate some BOM IDs. Over here it's generated them. I want to show that table, so I'm going to click down here to show that bill of materials table, and you can see there it is. So I'm just going to select it, and there's lots of different things we can do with that. So for example, we can have it at the, uh, the top, or the bottom, down the left hand side for example. I'm just going to ask to free it up. I'm going to increase the, the font size just a bit and then what's quite nice is that if I just stretch this, we can have it as big as we want. If I actually try and make it too small, it will actually go ahead and split it into multiple columns. As you can see there, it's slightly going off screen, but multiple columns. I'm just going to go for the single column. We'll have it something like that and I'm just going to move that over to there. Let's just make it a little bit smaller actually. Okay, so there's my bill of materials. Bill of materials obviously isn't complete without some balloons to see, what, to see what's actually going on. So again, I'm just going to drag a selection box over there. I'm going to create some callouts. And with those callouts, again, there are multiple things that we can do. We can have them at the bottom and top as they are there. We can have them in a circular array so we get this nice kind of arc. We can have them perimetric. Now, perimetric basically means that they're quite close to the product. As you can see, as I'm moving the geometry closer to me, it's modifying where those, uh, where those callouts are. I'm actually going to leave them at the very, very top, I think, and then free them up. So I'm going to put free 2D on it, and that means basically that I can drag these into other positions 
just so that it looks a bit nicer. You can see that I can move not only the balloon itself, but I can move the, the actual uh, point itself too. So maybe that could come over here. And we can drag that over there maybe. Okay, so that looks pretty good. However, I want my all of my balloons to be in a nice line. Now this is where I'm going to use a tool that's been drip fed into uh, SolidWorks 2012 and, and, and newer. So under my author tab, I've got the option of creating a magnetic line, which I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a line, something like that. And I can use that line to go fishing for my callouts, as you see there. So that's great, being able to do that. And what's nice is I can twist this, I can stretch it, so I can make it look really quite nice, something like that. Now one of the benefits to this is actually, if I just click this button here, I can pick an edge to align it to. So if I just come over here and I pick this edge here, for example, you can see that aligns it really nicely. I've dealt with lots of technical authors in the past, and lots of them are very, very uh, particular, shall we say. So this is a nice way of being able to, uh, to make sure they're, they're happy bunnies. So let's just drag that down, something like that, and I'm pretty happy with that. So this is where I could create my SVG format from. Uh, I can save this image as an SVG, but first of all, what I want to do is to create a hyperlink. So I want to create a hyperlink so that if anybody clicks on this master's valve assembly over here, it takes them to the next SVG that's associated with it. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select it. Over here in my properties, I can create not only a pulse, if I just zoom into this, not only a pulse, so I can make it flash on screen, but I can create a link as well. So all I'm going to do is say that I want to create a link to a given file that is on my desktop somewhere, if I can just go and find the content, and I want to link it to 4240.0201 SVG, so that is the SVG associated with that assembly there. So let's just select it, say OK, and now this is where I'm going to save my SVG out. So under my workshops, we're working our way gradually across here, my technical illustration output, so this is how to create my SVG formats. So all I'm going to do is change a few of these settings. We can have sharp edges, construction edges, for example. That's where we see the tangent lines. Um, I'm also just going to play with some of these. Now, what we can do is preview it, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to preview it just in the line format. So if I click preview, this is going to allow me to just preview it before making a save, so just to make sure I'm happy with it. So you can see here that we get a really, really nice output. Uh, again, technical authors are going to love this because we've got the different line weights you can see for the very, very outer edges. Um, and it looks quite nice, it looks quite tidy, very simple, um, and you can see here that as I roll over them, it tells me what they are in the bill of materials, and vice versa, if I just roll down over the bill of materials, it tells me what they are in the graphics window. So again, a great way to allow people to explore your products, find exactly maybe the parts they need, and if I click on here, it takes me to that next file. So that's great, so I can get a, a, a nice experience, a nice navigation experience uh, going. So. Let's just come back here and we'll make a, let's just close that down actually, because uh, I'm just going to preview the, uh, the other kind. So let's have a look at with shadows. So again, this is quite a nice output in the fact that we can create shadows. So you can see just above my cursor there, you can see a block of shadow on those parts. Again, a really nice output, I think. Technical authors are going to love this. Again, that takes me to the next one. And then finally, color regions. So I'm going to leave color regions and shadows on and then preview that. And you can see here that now that this is going to fall more in line with the rest of them. So we've got those block colors. As you can see, maybe if you're like me, I'm not so keen on that. I'm not so keen on the, uh, the block colors there. But it's another great output that is there for you to use. OK, so that's how to create SVGs. Okay, the next thing I'd like to do is to show you another type of experience. Now this for me is, is and again, another really nice output in the fact that we're able to provide an experience, a 3D interactive experience online, HTML, again I'm viewing this through Internet Explorer, so that people can explore your products and people can get more familiar with them, navigate, buy spare parts. Um, so, for example, we've got a really nice image here on screen. Now that might look to you guys like a 2D flat image, but watch this. I can spin it around, I can zoom in and out, I can explore to other, other pages. You can see here that we've got things flashing away there. 
hopefully that's clear for you guys, they're flashing away, I guess drawing people's attention to them, hey look they're flashing, they probably do something, we've got some navigation buttons up here as well, so maybe we want to dip into here, have a look into this assembly, we've got some more things flashing, maybe have a look at this handle assembly, explode that, and again we've got navigation buttons that can take us back and forth, so hopefully you'll agree, a really kind of intuitive interactive experience there. And we've also got this nice tool as well, I'm going to explain what that is in a, in a bit more detail in a second, but we can navigate straight away to other pages that we've created, all the time that being 3D. So imagine the power of being able to spin your products around, get your end users to spin those products around and explore them in a bit more detail. So let's have a look at how to create something like that. So going back to Composer now, I'm just going to go back to my master view, so this is my very first view, my default view, again I can spin it around, get it just how I want it, but all I'm going to do is use some of these other views that have been created to begin with, so these are, you know, you can imagine how these are done, it's just using the explode tools and our bill of materials here, so all I'm going to do on my master view is drag out some of these views to plonk on top of this page, so I'm just going to select my exploded view and drop that on the page up there. With this view I can scale it, you can see I've got like a drop shadow there, I can get rid of that if I, uh, if I deem it's not great, which I might do. Um, we'll take that into the top left hand corner. Then we can take out some of the other views as well, so let's just drop that view over there. We'll go for some other views, maybe the jaw, that might be quite useful, we'll have the jaw there, and we'll maybe have this handle assembly, and we'll just drop that assembly there over there. Now what's quite nice is all of these panels now, these 2D panels have properties as well, so if I just select those ones I can maybe make them uh, like a global width, so we'll go for say 60. I can also select all of them and ask for some tool tips, now at the moment we don't have an attach type of tool, so there's nothing linking these to any of the parts, so what I'm going to do is I can use lots of different, you can see here that lots of different tool tips, they're called tool tips, uh, of how I can link those to the actual geometry and screen, so I'm going to use maybe this one, that looks quite nice. Um, so, if I just select it, I can reassociate the ends of these to other parts. So, this handle assembly, that's kind of pretty much there already. This handle assembly, let's just associate it that with the bottom of the handle there. And this jaw, maybe on the jaw would be good. So, somewhere like that. What's quite nice about this is as I move my geometry, you can see that it does, those tooltips do stay on what I've dropped them on as well, which is nice. So, let's just move this into a slightly better position, something like that. And now I'm going to introduce you to the digger tool. Now this is a great tool. If I just hit my space bar, we get this digger. This is called the digger tool. This digger tool pop up. So what I'm going to do is just illustrate what it does. In its most basic form, it's a magnifying tool. So you can see here that I can zoom into certain parts and have a look in a bit more detail. I've got this window here that I can zoom right in. And again, being able to offer my end user this tool is a great way for them to explore it in a bit more detail. Some of the other tools that we've got, if I just make this a bit smaller so I can drop it up there, some of the other tools we've got, if I just open up my toolbar, are the following. This crosshair here allows me to take another tool tip to a certain place, so I'm going to look inside of this part and then I'm going to have a look at this particular tool here, which is called the onion skin. Now this is like peeling back the skin of an onion, so you can see here as I scroll this window, it kind of hides off parts, allowing me to focus on maybe this um, this big washer in the center, that needs some attention at some point, so I could zoom in just to show what's going on inside there, so this is called the onion skin. We've also got a virtual cutting plane as well, and you can see here that I can scroll this through, and it, this gives us a virtual cutting plane, plane into the view itself, again, be able to create a dynamic section through here, and all of these tools we can offer our end viewer, or end user. This is my favorite, this is the x-ray tool, very much like the onion skin, but uh, this time it kind of fades in and out, the other parts, it doesn't just get rid of them completely, so once we're happy with that, we might want to just take a picture, that can stay there, somewhere like that, I can resize it if I want to, uh, and because this is now an object, I can associate this to another view as well, so if I just come over to my views, we've got a view just down here, this 4243, uh, sorry, 4240 this view here is this, um, is this washer, so I can link this particular, if anybody clicks on this, I want them to take them to this view here called 424003. So all I'm going to do is select it in my properties, come down to link, and I'm going to link it to a view, 
called 4340.03 and click OK and that just means that if anybody clicks on it it's going to take them to that view. So with that let's just publish straight out to HTML. So this is quite nice in the fact that I can publish straight out to HTML. I don't need to take this through a third party or Dreamweaver Fireworks, whatever. I can do it straight from here and publish an HTML file or to PDF. And I can actually send this to a 3D PDF as well, so that's quite useful. So I'm going to publish this to HTML. I'm just going to drop it in my desktop so I know where it is. And we can change the type of output that we've got. So you can see here we've got HTML output and the different types. So if I just click on this, and just move this out slightly, and zoom in, and you can see we've got different types of profiles. So all of these are different types and ways of uh, saving out our HTML. So I'm just going to go with simple. That's just going to give me the view itself. But what we can do is this one. This is quite a useful one too. This is bomb. So this is going to give me a bit of materials in the bottom left-hand corner and a thumbnail or all of the views as well. We've got this one. This is a full one. This shows the bill of materials, views, and some of the meta properties as well. So the meta properties that have come from SolidWorks. But I'm just going to go with a simple one and just save it onto my desktop and replace the one that's already there. Now if I just close this down and open up my interactive player. It takes a couple of seconds to open up. So again, this is being viewed through Internet Explorer. Ah, what's happened is I didn't save my view. So if I just come back over to Composer and actually update this first view. So if I just scroll up, you can see that my master view hasn't updated yet. So if I just right click on it and say update the view. And now what I'm going to do first of all is just close uh, or delete some of those initial objects. Let's get rid of some of those. And then come back to Composer and do a save out, uh, do a publish to HTML. See this is live TV chaps. Uh, and I'm just going to save out HTML, just a simple version onto the desktop. And this time, hopefully, fingers crossed, if I launch my player, let's take a couple of seconds, as I said. And there it is. So this is my interactive experience that I've just created in Composer. So again, it's very tempting to think that's just a flat 2D image, but we can spin that model around. We can zoom in, zoom out, rotate it, have a look at some of these other parts these other slides that I've created. So a really nice way of getting the end user to, to have a truly kind of interactive 3D experience, which is great. Okay, you'll be pleased to know we're almost done. Uh, it's 11.40, so we've, we've had 40 minutes already. There's just one last thing I'd like to show you, and that's how to create an animation. It's not going to take me any more than about two minutes to do this. So all I'm going to do is create an animation. Now, I don't know how familiar uh, you guys are with creating animations in SolidWorks. It's a bit of a a dog, if I'm honest. Um, I'm obviously quite an experienced user and I still find it very, very difficult. Uh, in Composer, you'll be pleased to know it's a lot, lot easier. So what I'm going to do first of all is just change the way that we're looking at this because I don't like to see this uh, ambient occlusion. I don't think it really adds anything to it. Um, also, I'm not going to have a look at Actually, no, I think I'll leave the ground on there for this. Why not? So with the animator, it's very, very simple. We're, all we're going to try and do is basically create uh, an animation, but we're capturing certain information on what we're looking at on screen. So the first thing we're going to capture is uh, is a camera. So we can cap we can capture cameras and where the camera is, is looking at. We can capture the location of certain bits and pieces. And we can also capture the properties of certain parts. So for instance, what color they are. Are they opaque? Are they transparent? Um, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to control those three things and create <clears throat> just say 10, 12 seconds of animation. So let's just turn that ambient occlusion off. And the first thing I'm going to do at zero seconds is take a picture or, or, or basically tell it where my camera is looking at. Now I don't want the camera to start moving until about a second, so I'm just going to create another camera key there. So these are keys that we're dropping on, on this timeline you see along the bottom. So at one second I want to start the, move, the camera moving and I want it to take about two seconds. So I'm going to take it up to three. And at three seconds I want the camera to be looking about there, so I'm going to use my camera key there. 
I want it to hold there for half a second, so I'm going to create another key half a second on, and then I'm going to take another two seconds to zoom into that core there, that handle core, and take a camera key, leave it there for half a second, take another camera key, then say a second and a half on, I want to zoom out just a little bit to about there, so take another camera key, and then half a second later, so at eight seconds, I want this core to be starting to pull out. So what I'm going to do at eight seconds is select it and capture its location. And then it's going to take a second, let's say a second and a half, and then I'm going to pull it out. So after a second and a half, I want it to be in that location there. Now at that point, I'm going to capture a property of its opacity, so I want it to be fully opaque at that point. However, half a second later, so I only want it to take half a second, I want it to fade out completely, so I'm just going to record the capacity there, or the, sorry, the capacity, the opacity at that stage. Then after half a second, I want the camera to start moving, so I'm going to set a camera key now. After, say, a second and a half, I want it to be zoomed out to about there, so I'm going to take another camera shot and then one second later I want to be zoomed right in to that whole Macho logo and then take another picture there and if I go back now to the very very start and play it you can see the movie And there we go. So you can see, really, really simple. I've only created 13 seconds of animation there, but you can see how easy it is to create that. So you can create some really nice, uh, really nice animations. Okay, you'll be pleased to know that's the end of my dulcet tones <clears throat> this morning. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. The sun's going to shine, apparently. Um, any more information you require on Composer, please get in touch with your local account manager. Thanks very much again for your time.